It looks like my brother worked him over pretty good, too. Tommy's going to pay to dry clean that blanket, but there's no time to think about that here. Now, this doesn't exactly put me in the mood for love, but I've got to stall for time, and I can only think of one way to do it. I clamp myself onto Angela like there's no tomorrow. I guess she misinterprets my desperation as grand passion and starts kissing me. I mean, really going nuts at it. There's a strategy I'll bet Alex never considered for his checklist. So here I am, getting the best action of my life. But I can't even enjoy it, because six feet away, the trunk is open, and Jimmy Rat is snoring softly and bleeding all over my blanket. At this point, I'm committed to a course of action. I try to ease Angela down to the beach, but she pulls away. Get the blanket. Well, the beach is nice and soft. I don't want sand all over me, she exclaims, furthering my suspicion that she's an old hand at this. She dances around me, and before I can stop her, she's staring into the trunk at the blanket and its current occupant. Well, don't even ask about the screaming. I thought harvest of death was bad, but this is in a whole other league. I guess being mauled by a vampire hay baler is nothing compared to finding a body in your makeout blanket. He's dead. He's dead. Oh my God, Vince, he's dead. He's not dead. For some reason, the only thing I can think of is that old dead parrot skit on Monty Python. He's resting. Angela spares me the tough questions. She just gets in the car, arms folded, face like stone. Take me home, Vince, this minute. What can I do? I slam down the trunk lid, climb behind the wheel, and put the car in gear. I'm really sorry about this, Angela. Her silence is even more deafening than the screaming a couple minutes before. That's when I see the traffic jam. Oh, no. The cops have set up a roadblock on the causeway. They're searching cars coming off the beach, looking for booze and drugs. I haven't got any of that stuff. What I do have is Jimmy Rat in used condition. I throw the Mazda into reverse, but by that time there are a couple of cars in line behind me. Besides, this is the route off the beach, period. The only other escape is by submarine. I have a, vi I have a giddy vision of Alex continuing his checklist. Snorkel mask. Snorkel mask? What for? For when you get caught with a body in the trunk and you have to swim for it. Don't get cocky, Vince. This is my love life we're talking about. The guy three cars ahead of me gets nailed with a bottle of vodka, but he passes the breathalyzer. They chew him out and confiscate the booze, but he doesn't get arrested. No such hope for me. They're not likely to confiscate Jimmy Rat and send me off with a warning especially not after they see the name Luca on my driver's license. My family has quite a reputation in law enforcement circles. Let me do all the talking, I whispered to Angela, like there's anything to say. She nods, petrified. At least our predicament has scared her into forgetting how mad she is. The roadblock is two cars away, now one, Beside me, Angela's lips are moving. I think she's praying. The Nissan in front pulls away. It's our turn. And then, an act of God. Horn honking wildly, an out-of-control Cadillac weaves down the causeway from the other direction, doing at least 60. All at once, the driver slams on the brakes. The wheels lock, sending the big car into a spin. It sideswipes the divider in a metal-on-metal -metal shower of sparks and lurches to a halt. There, hanging onto the wheel for dear life, sits Benny the Zit. He's looking straight at me through the crack in his windshield. The cops all leap the divider and run to the scene of the accident. Hey, I'm not going to wait for an engraved invitation. I stomp on the accelerator and get out of there. About 15 other cars peel off after me. I get the real story later. When my dad found out that I'd gone on a date 
with Jimmy the Rat in the trunk of my Mazda, he gave my mother, he gave my brother a major earache. Well, t- Tommy passed the pain on to Benny. After all, it was Benny's fault that Tommy had to take my car to lean on Jimmy Rat. So it became Benny's job to get me out of this, no matter what the cost. The cost turned out to be one Cadillac. In my family, this counts as justice. Our thrilling escape does nothing to thaw Angela's icy attitude toward me. When I drop her off at her house, she says, If you promise not to call me, not to talk to me, to pass me in the hall and not even look in my direction, then maybe, maybe, I'll forget what was in your trunk tonight. I nod, sadly. I've never seen you before in my life. And I drive away. From the trunk of the Mazda, I hear pounding. Jimmy Rat wants out. I know I'm going to catch hell for this from Tommy, but I pull over and free the guy. I notice for the first time that he isn't wearing any pants, so I let him keep the blanket. I even give him change for the phone so he can call a cab. He looks disdainfully at my Mazda. Damn foreign cars. No trunk space at all. I have to keep myself from telling him, Hey, blame Benny the Zit. If he hadn't been late, you could have been beaten up and imprisoned in the back of a Cadillac, the Ritz-Carlton of trunks. Would that have been suitable? So that's the whole story, the post-mortem, pardon the expression. It's the right one, though. A post-mortem, a post-mortem is done on a dead body, and nothing is deader than the relationship between Angela O'Bannon and me. According to Alex the next day, all this is my fault. Face it, Vince, you screwed up. You had a golden opportunity and you blew it. This isn't doing my love life any good, you know. Think what it's doing to mine.